first I want to offer a correction here. This is a micrometer. This is a dial caliper. Uh, in this case it's a digital caliper. I know I mentioned earlier that this was a micrometer. My bad. This is a caliper. So it's capable of measuring the outer diameter, the inner diameter, and also if you push this out it's able to measure depth. What I've done here is this is the wheel we cut out. If you notice I took a plastic sheet and I'm going to screw this sheet on both sides and I just routed it just like I routed the wheel. I put the plastic on top, drilled a hole in the center of it and then mounted it on, on the top and then routed it out. So what I've done is I laid out the there will be 12 magnets on this wheel. So what I did is I laid them out and then I drew these lines which are kind of hard to see because of the light reflection. I drew these lines. Now this is how this outside material will be attached to the wheel. And the reason I want to do this is because this wheel is spinning at a close to 1000 RPM I don't want a chance of it cracking and flying apart so I'm going to add structurally to the outside of it a type of coating or surface that I know can handle that stress. And plastic, plastic or a polycarbonate, even a plywood, like birch plywood, um, where the grain is laid and the plywood is laid in different directions and glued, that would add structural support to the outside of, the, of your wheel. Um, even though this is MDF, um, there's a chance that it might have weaknesses and imperfections in it that could cause a catastrophic failure. So in this case, I'm going to use plastic. Like I said, you could use birch or plexiglass, polycarbonate, something to that effect to add extra structure and support for the outside of the wheel and we're going to put screws at these points and the reason you want to do it and space it out like this is because the wheel has to remain balanced and anytime you do something to this side of the wheel you have to do it to this side of the wheel and that's the only way you're going to keep this wheel from creating a real problem when you try to balance the wheel so by setting these up uniformly along the wheel I can eliminate that possibility. The wheels still have to be balanced, but the chances are that it'll be pretty close to being balanced once it's mounted if I ensure that I'm not creating some odd situations with the weight of the wheel. Uh, and one other thing here, what I did here is I upped the size, the shaft size from the original. I decided to mount this wheel with a pulley and a set of bearings and then I'll run a belt to whatever type of generator I want to use because chances are that the first type generator might not be right and I want to be able to change out the generator and by doing it this way I can also change the gear ratio coming off the shaft so if the wheels only running 900 RPM with a 2 to 1 ratio with a pulley on the wheel I can change that 900 RPM to 1800 RPM and be in the range of a normal generator even a uh, alternator so you'll see in the videos as I move forward I'm not going to mount it directly on the motor I'm going to mount it on a shaft use precision bearings in order to keep the wheel uh, independent of any kind of drive system, uh, external uh, system, this will give me the freedom to add whatever generator I want. So just for that, I, I want to explain that ahead of time here because that is one change we are making. Now what I'm going to do here, these plates, this is part of the mounting, so we're going to use this shaft and these plates come off of an exercise machine. 
you can have them cut. You might even be able to find them as some kind of duck cover or something. But basically these plates will be screwed down and this pulley, I've, I've put marks in it, evenly spaced three marks. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drill these out and use them to mount this pulley to hold the wheel and the, the, the grind a little divot in this shaft here so it can be tightened up against it with this set screw and also what that's going to do is the shape of this as you can see uh, if I tighten this a little bit on this side if the wheel is not running true I can use it as an adjustment so I did a similar thing on the cart motor uh, I created a I used a standard pulley and then I used tension to make sure the wheel was running true so uh, I'll, I'll go through those things and show you what I'm talking about but I wanted you to see how we're going to mount this so the shafts extended completely through the wooden part of the wheel and then this will hold it with bolts that run completely through the wheel with another set of uh, screws along the outside edge of the, the other plate to add rigidity to it. And one of the things I'm considering right now is adding this what is a flange basically it's off of a large high pressure pipe and I got it surplus and basically well, it was a different experiment there but this this will add some weight to the base of the wheel instead on the outside edge so by screwing that down to the wheel it's going to give me additional uh, torque as the wheel spins faster this is just like capacitance in an electronic circuit we're adding torque that's going to counteract any drag on the wheel short-term drag not continual drag continual drag is will, will kill it no matter what 